Hi everybody. Uh, since everybody is constantly asking me to record some video tutorial about the architecture workbench of FreeCAD and how to do Bing modeling in FreeCAD, I'm gonna do a quick overview today of FreeCAD and the uh, whole Bing modeling process. And this would be also a test if you guys liked this video. Um, I propose to produce more afterwards uh, about specific uh, subjects of Bing modeling, how to do, make walls, how to make windows, etc. But what I'm going to do today is a general overview of, of FreeCAD, basically. So, for who doesn't know FreeCAD yet, uh, FreeCAD is a 3D modeler. It's a generic 3D modeler. It's not made specifically for Bing, it's made for anything. We used to say it's made to model things that are going to be built in the real world. That's, uh, that can be from small electronic components to buildings or cities. So if you don't know it, if you don't have it yet, uh, it's easy to find. Uh, just Google for FreeCAD. And the first entry will be the FreeCAD website. So you just go into the download section. And you will get here a version, a stable version for all operating systems. The version I'm using here and what I am recommending you to use is not the stable version, but a development version. Uh, in a couple of weeks, we will release the new version 17 of FreeCAD. And you can already grab it if you go in that link. And I highly recommend you to use this one because it's already totally stable and uh, or you can wait a couple of weeks and get the official version when it's released. So after you download FreeCAD and install it and open it, this is what you will get. Uh, this start center page is something we will probably remove in next versions or change it or make it something a bit more useful. And then you have here uh, the most important components of FreeCAD, which is the workbench selector. Workbenches are basically collections of tools uh, that are grouped together by specialty. Uh, think a bit uh, of a big workshop where everybody, each different worker would have a different workbench that the guy who works with would, would, would have his own table with his own tools. Uh, the guy who works with uh, metal has another table with different tools, but they all can work on the same object. They just pass it from one to the other. The same concept applies in, in FreeCAD. You have all of these are the built-in workbench that come together with standard FreeCAD installation. But if you go, uh, you need version 17 development version to that. To do that, uh, if you use this add-on manager, you have a lot more workbenches that are programmed by other developers for outside of the, the FreeCAD core. Uh, several of those are pretty interesting to install for uh, Bing. Uh, I will develop that in a further video, but basically the DXF library is interesting to export and import DXF format. Flamingo is interesting, is a collection of tools to work with metallic structures. Um, the parts library is interesting, is a collection of pre-made objects. It's the object library of, of FreeCAD, uh, but just take your time, take a little time to, to explore all of them. There are really, really interesting things. So the main workbench that we're going to use for Bing is the Arch workbench. Um, it has a lot of tools, all these toolbars can be moved. I'm here with a smaller screen, um, so it gives a better video. But of course, if you have a large screen, this becomes interesting. Um, all of these workbenches uh, have their own tools, and uh, you can also bring w uh, tools from one workbench to another. Uh, if you go to customize here, you have really deep customization options for your workbench and you can really make your workbench look the way you want and bring in it uh, tools from the other workbenches. 
So um, this is what happens when you open a new file. Uh, let's, for example, switch to the draft workbench, and you have classic. The draft workbench has classical 2D drawing tools like line, the lines like this, like this, or you can do it fully from the keyboard just by entering 0, 0, 0, 2, 10, 0, 0, and you have your line. You can do it fully from the keyboard uh, as well. So each of these workbench has several different tools. The part workbench has basic uh, primitive shapes and, um, and so on. So the main workbench to be used for beam modeling is the arch workbench. Uh, it features several typical tools that you would find in other beam applications, such as wall, structure, uh, reinforcement bars, floor that's uh, used to make levels, building that's used to make building, site, window that's used to make windows and doors in FreeCAD door is a special case of a window, roofs, access systems, section planes, spaces, stairs, panels, and equipment, which is all those pre-made piece of things that like um, furniture or hydraulic equipment that you would find in, in a building, a frame that's used to make all kinds of frame objects like railings, etc. Uh, material tools, schedule um, that can gather data from the model, for example, counting all the windows or things like that, and tubes tools that are used to make piping. So the two main things about FreeCAD that it, that are important to to know and to understand uh, are that it's generic and it's parametric. Uh, basically, I've opened here a couple of files. Some currently working on. The interesting thing about being generic uh, is that you can really um, work the way you want and you, you're not forced to, to follow a kind of Bing way of doing, like most Bing application would force you, for example, to place all your objects inside a story object. In FreeCAD, you don't really need to do that. If you look at the content of these files, uh, each time you open a file, it would appear here, and um, all the content of the files, all the objects that the file contains are here in this window. In the case of this file, for example, you can see how I choose to organize it, basically by creating groups, and inside those groups, placing all my objects and you see that every little thing, every base object that was used to construct uh, another one uh, is there. So you really can organize this and you can organize your model exactly the way you want. Uh, if you're not interested in working by, by level, you just make your other way of working. You just group your things the way you want. Um, Another interesting thing is that uh, you're not forced to use those beam tools. I will explain that in a further video. But basically, uh, you can use all the tools from the other workbench to model and then uh, convert these objects to beam objects simply by taking like one block and saying this is a wall, saying one roof and saying this is a roof. Um, but you could model them with other tools or even with other software and import them in FreeCAD and convert them to, to being objects. Um, they are all made to, to be that flexible that uh, they don't expect any kind of shape. You could take the monkey head mesh from Blender and import it and say this is a wall and it will behave just like any other wall. You can cut it, you can join it with other walls and it would just work. Um, so that's the interesting part of being generic. It's not a BIM application. This is actually an advantage and not a problem. It's, it just opens the, your possibilities. And the other interesting factor is that it's parametric. That means that any of those objects that you would 
click here this one this window has here parameters and it is driven by parameters for example if you take this one and you for example take this wall and modify its height So all these objects are driven by the parameters. Um, you can work with these parameters in any unit you want. Uh, you can say this is 500 centimeters, and um, or you can even work in inch inside uh, a model that is centimeters. Or you could say this is uh, 20 feet. So FreeCAD always works uh, in real real world units, and you just need to specify the right units. But it would mix any any units together. Um, so basically, um, what can you do already with with FreeCAD? Uh, basically, this kind of smaller models works pretty well already. Um, they are quite easy to model now directly with with these beam tools. Uh, you could also import some parts uh, from other software such as Blender. Um, once you created your model, you can easily um, create some views of it by placing these section planes inside your model. And then once these section planes are created, you can use them to export to the views of these of the model. This can be easy then export to DXF, and this is how it goes inside of the DWG application, for example, like Draftite. In this case, I just added hatching and uh, dimensioning. I could have done it directly in FreeCAD, the hatching not quite, but the dimensioning works already. But um, in this case, I found it easier to do it uh, directly in DraftTize because it would be the same work of, of doing it in FreeCAD or in uh, in, in DraftTize. This is still, let's say, the old way of doing it, which is to export the 2D views inside the, the 3D inside a 3D model uh, but there is the, the next thing is already coming um, which is in this case for in this which is the tech draw module uh, which allows you to do all that directly in FreeCAD um, and this the big advantage is that these 3D views are parametric they stay constantly updated when you change something uh, in the model, um, the, um, all these dimensions would update automatically as well. Um, you can put hatching inside your view, you can put dimensioning, you can put text, uh, you can already do quite a lot of things in, in TechDraw. Um, uh, these can be exported to SVG, to DXF and to PDF directly. So another thing you can do as well, uh, which is very important um, in the Bing world, is to export this model to other Beam applications. Um, for this, uh, you can export any model to the IFC format, which is the de facto standard for for Beam models. Um, this model basically. Um, you don't need to do anything, you can just take any FreeCAD model, export, press the export button, uh, you can organize your model a little bit better, you can um, make sure that it's inside uh, a house object and uh, you can organize your model better, you can make sure you use the correct object type uh, depending on what you want, that a wall is a wall, a column is a column, etc. Uh, because that's the way it will be exported to IFC. Uh, if you don't do anything, it will, everything will be exported that as generic object, which is not what you want because the 
big advantage of IFC is to export uh, meaningful objects. And um, this is the, how, the kind of result that you get when you export uh, the model I was showing now uh, to IFC. Uh, basically, this is the this application here is IFC++. It's a free open source application as well. It works on all the platforms and it's my favorite test bed to make sure that the IFC files I export from FreeCAD are okay. If there are any problems, they will, it would will print here any error it would find in the files. And recently it becomes easier and easier to produce like 100% clean files from, from FreeCAD. Um, these files would usually open correctly in all other BIM applications like Revit or Archicad. Not always, uh, you always have problems, but again, you have the same problems when you export from Archicad to Revit or the contrary. So it's not specific to FreeCAD. Another cool thing that you can do is produce spreadsheets. You have here a spreadsheet module um, that can produce spreadsheets and in the Arc module you have this um, schedule tool that would fill uh, spreadsheets with uh, data that you can gather from your, from your model. Uh, for example, all the lengths of all the walls, uh, all the areas of all the windows, uh, all, the all of a certain type of windows and that kind of stuff. Uh, the idea is to produce a spreadsheet which has all the quantities and that you can use inside the spreadsheet application to put price on it, for example. Uh, another interesting thing to, you can do uh, from these models is to export them for rendering. It's one of the add-ons that you can get here um, is the render workbench and um, this allows you to use external renderers inside FreeCAD and produce nice looking images from, from directly from your model inside FreeCAD. If you look at all the file formats that FreeCAD supports, uh, there are really a lot of stuff and um, many of those formats are supported by other applications. Um, and each workbench and plugin that you that you uh, add as an add-on uh, can bring more file formats. Um, so there is really a big quantity of uh, exchange formats possible uh, with other applications. So that's basically it. In the description below this video I will place a couple of links to the FreeCAD website um, and to directly to the models that I showed in this video so you can download them, open them in FreeCAD and explore them here and see how they are built. Basically, uh, one of the big things also is that all of this is pretty easy to explore. Uh, with the space key you just turn one group on and off um, or, a, or a particular object. Um, you just turn everything on, off, and everything on again, uh, just to go back to the uh, origi original situation. And I guess that's it for this video, to may not make it too long. Um, I hope you liked it, I hope um, you find this useful. If you liked it and if you would like me to produce more of those, um, let me know in the comments below this video. So next one to begin to start to explore each of these tools and uh, more in detail how do you make walls, how to make uh, columns, how you put all your model together, uh, etc. Uh, that's it then. See you in the next video. Bye.